Welcome to Fireside Knicks. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Brett Hanfling. And yesterday's game, my friends, Knicks versus Philadelphia 76ers, bouncing back after that tough loss to the Orlando Magic. What a game, a performance. Kemba Walker finally showing us he's a freaking all-star, man. He looked awesome. He was hitting three-point shots. He was really changing the course of the game and maintaining momentum which was a big factor for the Knicks in this contest. I think that every time Philadelphia started to hit some shots and get some momentum, Kemba Walker said not so fast, drained another three-pointer and really stalled it in its tracks. And I thought that was a big, big catalyst in the Knicks emerging victorious. And, you know, one of the more important games of this early season, you know, coming up against a pretty big powerhouse of a team in Philadelphia, of course, missing Ben Simmons, but nonetheless have some really great players. They did a phenomenal job shutting down Joel Embiid. Um, so I want to talk about this game, some main takeaways. Brett, but how are you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing great. Uh, you know, it's victory. What did I say? Victory Wednesday. Um, yeah, I'll take and, it. And <laughs> you know, and you know, before we get into the game, I, I said something similar last week, but I just want to say how nice it is to sit down on my couch. You know, it's a 7:30 game. Turn the game on and genuinely think we should be a good team. Genuinely think we're going to put out a good performance. We have the guys who you know on national TV are going to play up to the level. Um, people are going to talk about us online. So it's just a re- totally refreshing, you know, emotional state as a Knicks fan to sit down and inspect a good game. Um, <clears throat> like you said, it was important, you know, to bounce back after a tough loss from Orlando, who's not a great team. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think we looked past Orlando. We just played a crappy game. We played a, a really crappy fourth quarter. Um, you know, they actually played a decent game. Cole Anthony played one of the best games of his career. Taron Ross did his thing in the fourth quarter, which he does. Um, the Knicks often, um, but they bounced back. This game was never really that close. You know, I know they, they cut it, you know, closer in the fourth, but I was never really worried. Um, and you know, and B didn't play a good game, but partly because of us, partly because of Mitch, but this is a good team. Even without Ben Simmons, people expect this to be a top two, three seed. Um, so to, to handle them pretty easily was, was a great, it was great to watch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, watching the defense in the first half really stood out to me as Tom Thibodeau-led team. You know, this was like what we've been waiting for. Against a really good Philadelphia team who hadn't scored less than 109 points for the first three games of the season, we held them to under 100. They have to be pretty damn proud of that. And I have to say, the physicality that Mitch brings with that added muscle is massive. You know, seeing him battle with Embiid and fight for the ball and, and go up there for uh, to get some rebounds – really was a catalyst yeah. in this game. Of course, Julius Randle, one of the more important players on this roster, he did something a little bit different than the Orlando game, right? He tried to really carry the team in isolation. He tried to you know, pick the whole team up on his back. And I think that was really his biggest flaw in that loss against Orlando. He tried to do much on his own. He was only shooting 20% from three. And this game, he scored about half the amount of points, but he had seven assists. He had like 16 rebounds or some crazy amount of rebounds. He was spreading the ball out, using himself as a decoy and getting open shots. For his teammates, and that's really what I, I where I see Julius Randle being the biggest factor on this team. If he can really just use his presence as a way to draw in double teams, draw in defenders, he's going to get so many open shots for his teammates. And and the Knicks are a good three point shooting team when they have open looks. Kemba Walker was a phenomenal. I think he was five for eleven from three. I was really impressed. But you know, what are your thoughts on how the Knicks really managed to get a win out of this? Like, what was the differences compared to that Orlando game? Yeah, I mean. I- You know, the thing that sticks out to me or the players that stick out to me right off the bat is two players. I'm going to split my star of the night tonight. Um, I'm going to split it with Kemba Walker, his, you know, you could call her coming out party to New York, and Mitchell Robinson. Um, You know, Kemba, like you said, scored 19 points, five threes. Alex, let me tell you, the last Nick point guard to hit five threes and and, uh, dish five assists in the same game, 2017 Brandon Jennings. Um, you know, Kemba is a guy that is, is a real shooter. Um, and, and, you know, most good teams have good shooters at the point guard position. Um, and obviously you could dish the ball also. So, you know, not that, you know, we've only played three games, but not that people were worried, but there was murmurs about Kemba, not from me, um, but from some people, you know, you know, is he the same player after having a, you know, a down season last, uh, you know, last season with Boston. Um, So it was a really important game for him, as as silly as that sounds in the fourth game. It was an important game in front of the Garden crowd. Um, And it wasn't in garbage time either. It was started in the first quarter. There were big buckets in the second and third quarter. Um, 
So Kemba's won my star of the game, and the second star of the game is Mitchell Robinson. Like you said, you stopped Joel Embiid. Um, Embiid finished second uh, in the MVP, MVP voting last year. He may have finished – he may have won it if he wasn't hurt. Um, it, you know, I think he missed like 25 games or so. Joel Embiid scored 14 points on two of seven shooting. Um, is that correct? Yeah, 14 points on two of seven shooting. Mitchell Robinson was physical. He, you know, you forget how long his arms are, how quick he can jump. Um, you know, he made Embiid take a couple of threes, which is he's a good shooter, but you know, we'll live with him taking in threes. Um, and not just that, I kind of took Embiid out of his out of his game. He didn't have his swagger. You know, Embiid's a jokester. He likes to get the crowd going. He likes to, you know, sort of mess with the other. He never really got that going. Um, so I think this was Mitch's best game of the season. Um, you know, took their best player out of the game. And it wasn't just Mitch. You know, Taj played good defense. And, it, you know, this is a team defense. But those are my two stars of the game. Yeah, absolutely. And there was a couple of statistics that really stood out to me, right? So Philadelphia shot about 29% from three-point range, which is abysmal. The Knicks bounced back with a 43% game after kind of hovering around the 27% against Orlando in that defeat. So 43%, that's a phenomenal mark. And their free throws were horrendous to start the year. Just absolutely terrible. They shot 93%. But one thing that I really, really liked about this team was that the majority of the free throws actually came from bench players. So Derek Rose, uh, Alec Burks, and Manuel quickly combined for 10 of their uh, 15 attempts. And that said a lot to me about the change of pace when they were on the court, right? When they got those Alec Burks, Emmanuel quickly, uh, Derek Rose combinations kind of moving and flowing, it changed the whole pace of the game. And I think Philadelphia was trying to catch up with the Knicks the whole time. And that was the big thing that Derek Rose said after the loss. He literally was like, when we watched the film, and it was ugly, it was really, really ugly and bad. The one thing that we noticed was there was a lot of jogging. There was a lot of lack of effort, a lot of lack of hustle. That was the one of the priorities that they went into this game looking to fix. And they went full steam, 100%, nonstop. They were switching. They were, they were making the right substitutions, right player combinations, keeping the pace heavy and hot so that way they could burn out Philadelphia. And the only guy that really like looked good, I mean, Tobias Harris looked decent with 23 points. He shot 10 of 18, so he was a pretty good player in this game. Um, they the the second half defense for the Knicks definitely fell off a little bit. Uh, Georges Niang had a pretty good game, especially in that second half. There, he shot yeah. three of five from three point. That left corner shot really like kind of was uh, pretty hot for him at times. And they were the Knicks were leaving him wide open pretty much the whole second half. Thibodeau will be angry with that, but overall, the second half, the first half defensive performance more than made up for it. Yeah, I think you nailed something in the beginning when you were talking there about the second unit and how we could sort of overwhelm these teams second unit. It was this it was in the second quarter. It was quickly. It was OB. It was Alec Burks. Um, which brings me to something I said last week. We're eight minutes into the podcast and I just mentioned OB Toppin for the first time. I just mentioned Emmanuel Quickly for the first time. This team is deep. It's a real team. You know <laughs> it's gonna be tough because like, you know, quickly didn't get that involved in the first couple of games, but he's the type of guy. He stayed with it. He was confident. He, you know, I, what do you have? I think he had nine points, nothing crazy. Uh, yeah, he had eight points and two of five shooting, but he, you know, he was engaged. He had that highlight move that everyone posted on Twitter um, where he dropped his buddy from Kentucky, Tyrese Maxey, which I'm, I'm not going to say may, maybe there was a trip. Maybe he tripped on Mitchell Robinson's foot. I, I'm, We're sticking with the, with, with the, yeah, who, with the who, ankle who breaker. <laughs> um, but this bench and this depth is going to be a thing we talk about all year. Um, you know, OB, you know, I think he had nine points. I think that's what I was confusing him with, or 10 points. Um, yeah, he had nine points, but he was engaged. He was four or seven. Um you know, it's going to be, it's going to be our, our differential, our, our different, sorry, our, our fa- big factor this season um, that we can overwhelm these second units. Absolutely. And like, that was like a big standout factor for me was just the depth of this team. And like, you know, quickly had 15 minutes. And what I liked about it is he wasn't forcing shots, right? He was doing a good job uh, passing the ball away, giving others opportunities because sometimes quickly we'll get on the floor and they'll just start heaving up three pointers, which definitely was a, is a problem for me. Um, but you know, looking forward, what are you thinking about this Bulls team that really is strong four and all to start the year? So, you know, it's funny. Someone said, you know, when's the last time the Knicks and the Bulls played both above five hundred? I don't have that stat, but um, the Bulls are four and all, right? Bulls are four and all. We're three and one. 
And, you know, the Bulls made a splash in the offseason. You know, they they grabbed DeRozan, they grabbed Lonzo Ball, good two, of the, two of the five probably biggest, uh, you know, free agent targets. And they came out hot. But the one thing is, I had to, I looked at their schedule. They haven't really played anyone. It's so they weak. Played Detroit twice, twice yeah. who should be the worst team in, in the East. Um, you know them. Yeah, probably them. Um, they played New Orleans. You know, with, with who's not a good team right now without Zion. And they played Toronto, who's sort of a wild card. I'm not. You know, they sh- they shouldn't be in the upper half, but they're still a wild card. Um, so I, I'm not saying they're not good, but they haven't proved it yet. I'm excited for that game. Um, I'm excited for every game at this point, but to play another, you know, exciting team, you know, Chicago, big city, you know, the Bulls and the Knicks back in the nineties were, were, you know, a, a good rivalry. Um, you know, it's a big game to say, it's dumb to say, silly to say in the fifth game of the season, but it's a big game. And I, I, you know, I can't wait for it. Yeah. So the one thing that the bills have is that they have a very good starting lineup, right? They have Levine, who's been phenomenal this year so far, Lonzo Ball, Vucevic, DeRozan, and Patrick Williams, but their bench is thin. They don't have a, a really great bench. So that's where the Knicks have a great opportunity to really overwhelm them. Um, if they can limit their starters and then and then force that high, and I think that's where the Knicks are going to go with, right? They're going to be like, let's go high pace, high energy. Let's force them to make a lot of substitutions. Because if you can get their starters off the off the court, that's where our depth is going to demolish them. That's where we're going to have a, a lot of uh, advantages. Um, so I expect it to be a very high pace, high intensity game. They're going to try and force those starters out, and we're going to get into our depth. We're going to get into the Alec Burks's, the Derek Roses, where there's not much of a fall off at some positions. Um, the quickly, of course, and Toppin, and that's where we're really going to try and like destroy them in transition, take advantage of their lesser uh, talents on the bench. Um, and I think that's where we're going to win this game. Of course, the starters are going to be a, a huge impact and a, and a big factors. Um, but there's also hopes that Nerlens Noel will be back and available. They're saying that he's ramping up. He's almost good to go. Thibodeau said before last night's game. So the hope is that they can get him on the floor for maybe 10 minutes and just get his, uh, his feet wet um, against the Bulls, which would be a great return for them. But would you agree? I think it's really going to come down to just tiring out those starters and get, letting our depth uh, – Pick them apart. Yeah, we just talked about it. It's going to be a thing all season. We have depth. We have guys on the bench that can score, that are that are energetic, um, you know, that are confident. Um, so, yeah, you know, we don't have necessarily the top end talent. You know, Randall could be there. He wasn't all NBA player. We'll see if he is again. Um, but it's that sort of two through 10th man that is better than most bench, most teams. Um and one more thing just about sort of the outlook of the season. Um, the Knicks right now are second in three-pointers attempted. They're first in makes. They're third in points per game at 118. This is a team that could score. This is a team that could shoot. It's not just the sort of grind it out, Tom Thibodeau, you know, you know that, that cliche, Tom Thibodeau, tough team that will be in close in every game. They could score. They could get up the court. They could shoot. They're deep. Um, so, it, 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 you know, that takes the potential of this whole team when you add that in with the Thibodeau grittiness and defense, it takes the potential of this whole team to really higher than we've seen in a long time. I completely agree. And, and Doc Rivers said after or before the game yesterday, like he has so much uh, love for Tom Thibodeau. The guy loves basketball. Um, he if if the players and coaches could all have his type of passion, they would all be great. You know what I mean? And I think that Thibodeau's passion is really rubbing off on some of the players. Um, and it's it's proving to be a huge factor and catalyst in their season so far and last season, of course. So I agree with you. I think this season is going to be really fun. I'm excited beating Philadelphia. It showed us that this team is resilient. You know, coming off a bad loss to Orlando, they put it behind them. Like Derek Rose said, have to have that amnesia as a team sometimes. Forget, forget about those tough losses. Bounce back and beat pretty good Philadelphia teams um, who, who started off pretty strong. So I'm excited. Uh, Brett, it's going to be a really fun season. I hope you guys yeah, are enjoying the I podcast. Can't wait. Of course, there's going to be a lot more content to go around. You know, we're getting a lot more involved on Twitter. We've got Instagram going. Um, we're going to try and start to build a really fun community here for you guys. And it should be a really uh, great quick season. Quick question. Yeah. Are you in or out on the bing bong? The bing bong. I, dude, anything that's about Nick's energy, I'm in. Right. Okay, I'm fine. In. That's, a, that's a good <laughs> answer. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. For I mean, now. look, it'll For probably now. fade away. Season. It'll fade away. Yeah, <laughs> it'll fade away. I mean, but hey, if we're winning, Bing Bong, man, I don't give a, I don't give bing a crap. Bong. Like, let's have exactly. some fun. I, I agree. <laughs> let's with have that. some fun. Um, we deserve this. We deserve to have some some interesting chance and deserves to have some fun with this team. It's been too long since we've had uh, this kind of positive energy flowing throughout New York City. Um, you can feel it. I saw it was twelve at night. Someone, some dudes walking down the street with a huge Knicks flag after the game, and I'm like. 
I don't think I've ever seen that. I've been here for six years. So like, really, really exciting. <laughs> um, this is a great time to be a Knicks fan. We have a lot of progress that we're witnessing firsthand, and the future is bright. And we have a lot of young players who are developing into very solid contributors. So we'll keep you guys updated in the near future. Of course, the Bulls game coming up will be really fun, so we'll cover that as well. But I hope you enjoyed the podcast from uh, – Alex, your host, and our co-host here, Brett. Make sure to subscribe below on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube, as always, my friends. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Go Knicks. Let's go. Let's go. Take care, Alex.